Hello, today I'm covering trailing stops. Now I've covered trailing stops before, um, but I've had some requests mostly around specific methods for trailing stops. But because lately I'm trying to reuse content and just show you functions, rather than show a particular trailing stop methodology, I'm going to show how you can hide trailing stops from your broker. So today I'm showing how to write a trailing stop that doesn't use stop loss on the trades. Now I'm starting with the moving average cross with a trailing stop. So moving average cross is my standard go-to expert advisor when I just want to demonstrate something else. And I actually covered moving average cross with trailing stops in an earlier video and I will leave a link to that video if you want to see it. Uh, so I won't be going over too much about what this does but just briefly in case you haven't seen that or because this code has probably changed a little bit since then. Uh, what we have here are the inputs for the uh, fast and slow moving average and basically this expert will trade every time those moving averages cross over. I have an order size which is just a simple volume. Then I have take profit and stop loss and I'm entering these in this example in actual price movement so this is not points or pips this is two cents and that stop loss is also two cents at the moment. Um, so they're quite a big take profit and stop loss and I've done that so that there's plenty of time for the trailing stop to kick in. And then I have the input of the trailing stop distance, which is 0 0.002. And then just magic and trade comment. So most of this is just about the moving average crossover, and that's not too important. Um, we get down though to on tick, and this is where I implement the trailing stop call. So if there is a trailing stop distance in the inputs that is greater than zero, meaning you want to do a trailing stop, then I'm calculating the buy close price, or I'm getting it from the symbol info double, and the buy trailing stop price is then just the close price minus the trailing stop distance, and for the sell, it's just the opposite direction. Now I'll say at this point, for these trailing stops, for this one, which is the standard trailing stop, I'm not up to the hidden trailing stop yet, uh, but for both of them, this is for the trailing stop situation where all the trades get the same trailing stop, and it is at a specific price. I know there are certain methodologies where the trailing stop might be different on each trade, uh, and that's a different example altogether. But for this, the trailing stop is the same on all trades, but it's only applied once that trailing stop is at least as good as the entry price for the trade. So I've got a function here, update trailing stop. And this is what I want to show you. And so far, I'm just looking at using the stop loss in the trailing stop. And this is a generic function. And so I'm passing in the symbol, the magic number, the type of trade that I'm applying it to, because obviously there's a different trailing stop for buy and sell. And then the actual price that I've calculated somewhere in my expert advisor that I want to apply. Now, for this example, I'm using a simple difference based in terms of price difference. You might base this on something like another moving average or any other indicator. It doesn't matter how you calculate that. The idea is that you have come up with a trailing stop price for both buy and sell. Now this trailing stop, it takes all of these inputs because it's a generic function that I have. It's inside the expert advisor in this case, but typically I keep it in a function library and therefore it doesn't know anything about what's happening inside the expert advisor and it's fully self-contained. So that's why I pass in all of this information. So let's just quickly look at that function. Here is my generic update trailing stop function. Uh, the inputs, symbol, magic number, type, and trailing stop price. And this is written for MetaTrader 5, but I'll just explain as I go through this the small number of differences to make this work for MetaTrader 4. Um, but first I set up a result which is false, and that's simply going to indicate whether anything changed as a result of updating this trailing stop. Uh, I don't actually use it in this expert advisor, but I've just got it there in case you want to know. A simple loop through all of the positions, and if this is MetaTrader 4, then that would be orders total. And then I select by index using, I'm using the position info class for MetaTrader 5. Uh, if this is MetaTrader 4, then this would be an order select statement. And then I'm comparing the symbol, the magic number, and the position type with the function inputs here. And again, for MetaTrader 4, this would be order symbol, order magic, and order type. And then if the type, which is the argument passed in, is a type by, or if MetaTrader 4, then order type by, 
then if the trailing stop price, this is the price calculated here and passed in, is less than the open price of the trade continue. And I said, I'm not going to apply the trailing stop until we at least get to the opening price for the trade. So if this particular trade has an opening price ahead of the trailing stop price, then I'll continue. And for the short, if the trailing stop price is greater than the price open, then continue. If we get to the next line though, if the position info stop loss, so if the stop loss for this particular position, or if the order stop loss, if you're a MetaTrader 4, is greater than zero, and the trailing stop price is less than or equal to the current stop loss for the trade, continue. So what I'm doing here is simply saying, if it's already got a stop loss, and that stop loss is already better than the trailing stop price, then I'll just continue. That means by the time I get to this line here, then this trade is ready to have a new trailing stop applied. And all I do then is trade.position modify for the ticket number, the new trailing stop price, and the existing, let's scroll over, the existing take profit price. Okay, so that's the simple function. Now I will update this and create a new version that has a trailing stop that doesn't use the stop loss so the broker doesn't see it. This is going to be managed entirely inside the expert advisor. So now I have a copy of the MA cross trailing stop and I've just renamed this as MA cross hidden trailing stop. First thing I'm going to do is add a boolean here to indicate whether you want to use a hidden trailing stop. So this will be able to use a standard trailing stop or a hidden trailing stop. So false by default, but we can easily turn that on then. Now, if I'm using a hidden trailing stop, that means I'm tracking the trailing stop price inside the expert. And just as with the standard trailing stop, the function that I'm going to use later is a generic function, so it knows nothing about what's happening inside the expert. So the storage of that trailing stop price will be handled inside the expert. I'll just create two global variables for that. And as I said here in this comment, you should consider placing these in more permanent storage. So I'm just using simple internal variables here. But if you're doing this in a real situation, you need to consider situations where you might restart MetaTrader. So you might want to be updating something like the global variables of the terminal. So with those two variables, then I'll just initialize them here in the on init. I'm initializing them to zero. Um, and again, if this is a real situation, you probably want to recover them from global variable storage at this point. And now if I come down to where I'm actually calling, I'm still calculating a fixed trailing stop price for buy and sell. That's the responsibility of the expert. And now I still have this call to update trailing stop. I still have the generic update trailing stop function in my expert, uh, but I'm going to create another update trailing stop function, which is just internal for this expert. And because it is internal to the expert, I don't need to pass in things like symbol and the INP magic because they're known within the expert. So I'm just going to call this new function update expert trailing stop. I could have left it as update trailing stop because the arguments are going to be different, but I just think this will be a little bit easier to follow. So now I can remove this symbol and the INP magic from these calls. But also because the expert is now responsible for maintaining the trailing stop value, I need to pass in those two additional arguments or one additional argument for each the current buy and current sell trailing stop price. So these are the two global variables, the buy current trailing stop price and the sell current trailing stop price. Now I could at this point already compare the existing price with the new price and determine whether a change is going to happen. But there are some other things that are going to happen inside the trailing stop function. Uh, and so I'm going to pass them in anyway, even if I know that this price is worse than this price, uh, because it will also handle closing trades and resetting values. So here I already have the existing update trailing stop function. I'm just going to insert the specific function for the expert. As I say here, this is specific to the expert. Update expert trailing stop, the type, the trailing stop price, and I'm passing the current trailing stop by reference so that it can be modified inside the function. Now this last line, I'll just go to the last line first. This is a call to the standard update trailing stop function, this one. 
and it doesn't use that current trailing stop price. So it's not going to modify it, doesn't care. And so what I'm saying here, if the INP hide trailing stop is false, then I'm just going to call the standard update trailing stop. And that doesn't really care about these global variables that are tracking the trailing stop. But if hide trailing stop is true, then I'm going to call this new function update hidden trailing stop. Scroll the screen across. The arguments are much the same. It has the symbol, the magic number, type, and the new trailing stop price. But it also passes in the current trailing stop price, which has come from here. And that will be modified inside that function as a way of tracking that trailing stop value. So now, next thing to do is to write this update hidden trailing stop. And to save time, because this is part of a standard function library that I have, I'm just going to paste it in rather than type it all. And I'll tell you now, I don't find this to be a particularly elegant piece of code, um, but it works. So update hidden trailing stop, you've seen all the arguments as before. The current trailing stop is passed by reference so that it can be modified in here. The function needs the current buy and sell close price. Now these could have been passed in, but again, it's a generic function, so I'm recalculating them here. And then I have this temporary stop price, which I initialize to the current trailing stop price. Okay. If the type is a position type buy, then if that temporary stop price is zero, or the trailing stop price, the new stop price, is greater than or equal to the temp price, then I update the temp price to the new price, and just the opposite direction for sell trades. Give myself a little more space there. And then I initialize this result variable, false. Uh, this is the result that's going to come back from the function. And now I need to just look for any trades that need to close because I don't have a stop loss on the trade, so I actually have to loop through them all and look for trades where the current closing price has dropped below, or below in case of a buy or above in case of a sell, this stop price. I'm using a counter here, and this is where it starts to get inelegant, but I'm using a counter to know how many trades I've processed. This is the standard loop that we had earlier. If the type is a buy, if the temporary stop price is less than the open price for the trade, then continue. So that's the equivalent of earlier when I said that I'm not going to open or I'm not going to update the stop loss price if the stop loss, if the new stop loss price isn't at least up to the open price for the trade. So that's the equivalent here. And then I increment the count. This simply means that I've found a trade where the new stop loss price is better than the open price. Doesn't mean that I'm changing the stop loss price yet, but it's better than the open price. So I'm just counting those. Another condition here also for position type buy or sell. If the buy close price, and remember that comes from here, it's just the current closing price for buy trades and obviously also the closing price for sell trades. If that is greater than the temp stop price. So the current price is above the stop loss price, which means I don't want to close trades, then break. Now break will simply exit the loop. It will exit this loop. Mainly that means if the close price is greater than the temporary stop price, then I'm not going to close any trades because there is nothing I need to do. I could have checked that if you're thinking about it, I could have checked that before I even started the loop, but I need to run the loop to find if there is at least one trade where that temporary stop price is better than the open price. And you'll see why in a moment. But I need to go through the loop at least one time, and then as soon as I hit this condition, and that's why I'm breaking here instead of just continuing, there's no point in processing the loop any further because I know that I will not close any trades. The same for sell. If sell price is less than temporary stop price, then break. And then I simply say result or equals. So that is the same as saying result equals result or trade.positionClose. So rather than modify the positions here, I'm actually closing them. 
So by the time I get to here, I've found a trade where the temporary stop price is better than the open price and the close price has dropped past that temporary stop price or dropped past or equal to and so that trade needs to be closed and then I just pass in the ticket number so if this is MetaTrader 4 then this would be the order close function and this is the end of the loop so when I get to here I need to update that current trailing stop price which was passed in way back here so that I know that I have a new trailing stop minimum or high water mark, if you like. If the count is equal to zero, then I haven't found any trades where the new trailing stop price is better than the opening price of the trade. Now that could be because I've, you know, earlier passed closed all of the trades that were matching, or it could be that I simply haven't reached the opening price of the first trade yet. In that case, then I'm setting the current trailing stop price, this is the global variable when it comes back, to zero. If not, then it is the same as the temp stop price. So that's how I'm managing to eliminate that current trailing stop price in cases where it is behind all of the trades. Now you may be looking at this and thinking, well, if count is greater than zero, and I've closed all of the trades, then I also should have a current trailing stop price of zero. So that's true. You could include here uh, result or, which means I've closed a trade, or the count is equal to zero, and then I'll reset the trailing stop to zero again. So that's a generic function that will not show the trailing stop as a stop loss on your trades, uh, and it will take care of closing them. I'll just do a quick compile in case I've made any mistakes here. Okay. Now, when I tested this, I found that the standard trailing stop gave a slightly different result to the hidden trailing stop. And when I followed it through, there were a number of situations where the strategy tester would actually close according to a stop loss a few seconds before the hidden trailing stop would close. And when I looked specifically at those instances, it was because, and this is the way I think it operates, the strategy tester seems to be closing trades when the price moves through the stop loss price, even if there is no tick at that price. So if perhaps the price from one tick to the next moves by three or four points, if the stop loss price is in the middle of that range, the strategy tester will close the trade by interpolation, where the hidden trailing stop needs to wait until there is a tick because that's when the price has shifted. So I was finding that the hidden trailing stop was closing just a two to three seconds later in some cases. Um, over a test of something like two years, it made a difference of $10 in the result for this particular uh, expert advisor. So I don't think it's a significant issue, um, but that's what you'll get if you want to hide your trailing stop from the broker. So that's it for this particular video. Um, now that I have those functions, I'll be able to go on and show some of the techniques that people have been asking about for different types of trailing stop, and they'll come in future videos. So if you found this useful, then please click that like button. Um, if nothing else, it helps other people to find these videos and find use from them. And if you want to see more of my videos, then click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. Thank you for watching.